Hi, you guys. Welcome to Audrey's Reading Area. Educational Tuesday, but you know this week and next week, I'm doing holiday books. So, welcome to Audrey's Reading Area. Alexa, what time is it? It's 5 p.m. Alexa, what time is Audrey's Reading Area? Audrey reads in her area live at 5 o'clock p.m. All right, all right, all right. Welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for supporting, showing, showing up and showing out with me, showing some support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, girl. My longtime friend, Jennifer. So, you guys, please click like. Hey, Leo. Leo Carlos. Hey there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for always being here and showing up and showing support and listening to me read fun, exciting and educational books because today's Educational Tuesday. So guys, please click that like button and hit that share button and then go on over to Audrey's reading area on YouTube. Smash that subscribe button for me. Punch that notification bell so that you can be notified every time I upload a new video. You'll be the first to know. And you'll be the first to share it too. All right, all right, all right, you guys. Now, the fun, exciting book, holiday book that I'll be reading for you today is Jacob's Gift. Jacob's Gift. This book was written by Max Lucado and it was illustrated by Robert Hunt. Max Lucado, illustrated by Robert Hunt. It says on the back, God gives gifts, Jacob. Some can sing, others teach, and you, you can build. You have a special gift. Have you wondered why God gave you this gift? Mm. All right, all right, all right, you guys, listen up. I'm going to read the book first and then I'll read the insert from the inside of this book. It says, Rabbi Simeon brushed the sawdust off his hands and began untying his apron. Before you leave today, I have a special announcement. He hung the apron on a wooden peg and turned to look at the handful of boys in his shop. All but one apprentice had removed their aprons and put away their tools. Rabbi Simeon looked across the workshop. One boy continued sawing a piece of wood. Jacob, the rabbi instructed, our work is finished for the day. Put away your tools. Jacob didn't respond. The only sound he heard was the swish, 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 swish of the saw. Mm. And now swish swish was the only sound anyone heard. But Jacob didn't know that. The other boys in the shop began to snicker, which means laugh. You have to laugh a little bit. Rabbi Simeon let out a deep sigh and shook his head, but he wasn't mad. Deep down or down deep, he was pleased. He too knew what it was like to get lost in the world of woodworking. But it was time to go home. Jacob, the rabbi called again, his voice a bit louder this time. The sawing stopped. When Jacob heard no other noise, he knew he'd done it again. Slowly, he placed his saw on the table. I'm sorry, rabbi, he said softly. Rabbi Simeon smiled. It's all right. Put away your tools and hang up your apron. Jacob quickly cleaned off his work area. With a sigh, he stood and walked across the room, never looking up. This was pa the part he hated the most. Everyone was looking at him. Wow. He hung, his, he hung up his apron and the other boys continued to snicker. Jacob's cheeks burned. Finally, the rabbi spoke and all eyes turned back to him. As I said earlier, my nephew from Nazareth should be here within a few days. 
He is a master carpenter who knows quality work. He will help me select one of you for a special task. The one who builds the best project will work with me on the new synagogue. Wow. Wow. What an opportunity, huh? It will be me. The words were so strong in Jacob's thoughts, he feared he had spoken them out loud. Only days earlier, he'd overheard the rabbi say, just leave Jacob alone with wood and he can do almost anything. Jacob had turned red then, too, but that time with pride. I just have to be chosen, Jacob determined. Like, I just got to be chosen. I just got to be chosen. I want to use my hands to help build God's house. It doesn't matter that everyone says I'm so shy. This time, Jacob, did you hear what I said? Uh, no, sir. <laughs> He said, uh, no, sir. I'll be away for the next three days, which you may all use the workshop to finish your projects. As the others began to leave, the rabbi asked Jacob to stay. Hmm. Again, Jacob felt his cheeks, cheeks warm up. He waited till everyone had left and then approached the carpenter. I'm sorry, Rabbi, he apologized. I'll do better next time. The rabbi motioned for Jacob to sit on one of the stools. Oh, Jacob, you've done nothing wrong. I asked you to stay so I could tell you something. The rabbi smiled, pulled up a stool and sat down. He placed his big hand on Jacob's shoulder and began. God has given you the gift of woodworking. What is difficult for many is easy for you. Surely you've noticed. Jacob nodded slowly. He had wondered why other boys struggled with the wood to make things that seemed so simple to him. God gives gifts, Jacob. Some can sing, others teach. And you, Jacob, you can build. You have a special gift. Have you ever wondered why God gave you this gift? So I can learn to be a good carpenter, he guessed? Well, the rabbi chuckled, not exactly. God gave you this gift to share with others. Let's say you gave a present to one of my daughters. How do you think that would make me feel? Happy? Of course, even though you gave the gift to my child, I would feel like you had given it to me. God is like that too. When we give a gift to one of his children, it's like giving a gift to God. If you ever have a chance to help somebody, remember what I told you. Now run home and tell your father that I hope he has an inn full of guests next week. Like a run tell that. Run and tell your father, run and tell your father that I hope he has an inn full of guests next week. That evening at supper, Jacob's father reminded him of the days ahead. We're expecting a lot of business, son. I'll get up early, promised Jacob. I'll work on my project in the mornings and help you in the evenings. Mm. The next three mornings, Jacob crawled out of bed while it was still dark and went to the workshop. With a fire going and a lamp burning, he worked hard to complete his project. The other boys had laughed when he told them what he was going to build, but now that it was almost finished, they weren't laughing anymore. Jacob was building a new kind of animal feed, trough. His would have wheels. He got the idea while watching some men work in the stable next to his father's inn. They loaded a wagon full of hay, rolled it onto the shed, and dumped it in the trough. He thought, hmm, why not put wheels on the trough? 
And that's what Jacob was planning to do. Interesting. Jacob had returned to the workshop after helping his father at the end. Rabbi Simeon will be here tomorrow. I must finish tonight, thought the sleepy boy. Jacob looked at the trow and then at the four wheels piled on his workbench. So much work still to do. He was so tired. Maybe if I could close my eyes for a few minutes. We all know what happens when we do that. Just for a few minutes. <laughs> uh oh. In what seemed like the very next moment, a beam of starlight slipped through a crack and fell across Jacob's napping eyes. What? What? He shouted, startled by the sudden light. He had slept through the night. Then he looked out and saw the village showered by a gleaming, shimmering light in the night. Jacob rubbed the sleep from his eyes as he walked outside and toward the star that seemed to dance in the sky near his father's inn. Mm. Then he heard a strange sound in the stable behind the inn. Quietly, Jacob crept closer. He looked through a knothole in the stable wall. There in a tiny nest of straw on the ground was a baby. Beside the baby knelt his mother. A man gently covered her with his cloak. The baby must be uncomfortable on the ground, Jacob thought. Quickly, Jacob turned and raced back to the workshop. He stood beside his newly built feed troll. He had measured each board so carefully he had cut each piece with skill. He had oiled it with care. It was the best work Jacob had ever done. Tomorrow, the rabbi would select the best apprentice. But tonight, there's a new baby without a place to sleep. Oh. Good morning, boys, said Rabbi Simeon. This is the big day. Jacob approached the rabbi. Uh, sir, I need to tell you something. Later, Jacob, later. Oh, oh. We need to get everything ready for my nephew. Here, help me. The rabbi's voice drifted off as he began to take the projects outside. An unfinished chair, a desk with one leg too short, and a wobbly stool. Then, looking at a stack of four wheels, he asked, where is your project, Jacob? What where's your project? That's what I tried to tell you. Something happened. There was this big star and... Uncle Simeon. J Joseph Simeon shouted, extending his arms. I'm so glad you're here. Jacob's eyes widened. This was the man he had seen with the baby in the stable the night before. With one arm still around Joseph, the rabbi turned to Jacob. Jacob, this is my nephew from Nazareth. Jacob was too surprised to speak, so Joseph spoke in his place. We've already met, said Joseph, putting a hand on the boy's shoulder. In fact, Jacob gave me my newborn son. He gave my newborn son his very first gift. Your son? The rabbi inquired. What son? Where is he? Come and I'll show you. And the rabbi and Jacob hurried behind Joseph. Always be kind to everyone. Joseph led them around a curve and down a hill toward the end. Did you stay at the inn, Joseph? Not quite. It was too full, Joseph smiled. Then where did you stay, asked Rabbi Simeon. You'll see. Joseph led them past the inn to the bottom of the hill. There he left the path and turned towards the shelter. The stable? Simeon asked. You kept your baby in a... Joseph smiled and placed a finger to his lips. 
Quiet, uncle. They're asleep. Follow me. He lowered his head and entered the stable. A cow mooed at the presence of the trio. Joseph stepped next to the tro and motioned for them to approach. When the rabbi and his student looked inside, they saw a beautiful newborn baby. His name is Jesus, Joseph whispered, and he has a cradle fit for a king. Joseph's kindness made Jacob's cheeks turn red, but he felt so good seeing the baby asleep in the feed throw he had made. Look at that. Is it not a manger? A way in the manger is a feed trough. It's a manger. I'm gonna still call it a manger. Now I see why your project was missing, said the rabbi, and it is the finest project I've seen. You will be the one to help build God's house. But tell me, why did you decide to give your feed trough away? Jacob smiled with delight. I remembered what you said, Rabbi. When you give a gift to one of God's children, you give a gift to God, said the boy. The rabbi's voice was soft. And so you have, my son. So you have. The end. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful story. Wow. A beautiful story. The end. Wow. So I'm going to read the insert in the front right here. It says, when you give a gift to one of God's children, you give a gift to God. This is the lesson of Max Lucado's, that's the author, Max Lucado's new Christmas classic. And this is the lesson that young Jacob learns as a carpenter's apprentice. Rabbi Simeon announces to the boys in his shop that whoever builds the best project will work with him on the new synagogue. Jacob loves working with wood. He just has to be selected. He thinks long and hard about what to build. It would be the best work Jacob had ever done. With only a few hours left to finish his project, Jacob fell, falls asleep, only to be awakened by a gleaming light. Jacob faces a tough choice. You already know which one he chose. Tomorrow the rabbi will select the best apprentice, but tonight there's a new baby without a place to sleep, and he provided him a place to sleep. Wow, what a beautiful story, you guys. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here and listening to me read fun and exciting books like Jacob's Gift. Beautiful story. Please, you guys, please click like. Please share this story and please go on over to YouTube, smash, smash, smash that subscribe button for me. Don't forget to punch that notification bell so you could be one of the first to know when I upload, every time I upload a new video. All right, all right, all right, you guys. Then you could be the first to share it too. That's how cool you are. All right, all right, all right, you guys. Thanks for being here at Audrey's Reading Area. I want to shout out to my people. Mom, thanks for being here all the time. Jennifer McLean, love you, my longtime friend, longtime friend. Leo Carlos, thanks for being here. Cookie, thanks for being here, Cookie. David King, thank you guys so much for showing all this love. I really, really appreciate it. Yes, I can't see anybody else. If you don't comment, I won't see you. So sorry about that. But thank you guys for being here. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you share it. And I hope you let your kids and your grandkids and your great grandkids listen to me read fun, exciting books like this. Yes. <laughs> Don't forget. And your friends and their kids. And you can even listen to me read yourself. Lots of adults do. Thank you, thank you, thank you once again. Here at Audrey's Reading Area, we appreciate you. We love you. We love the support and thank you. I am pretty soon, probably starting January, going to be reading live on YouTube. You're going to have to tune in to YouTube 
YouTube, YouTube to hear me because the cha changes that Facebook is making doesn't allow me to go live on my computer. I'm going live on my phone and everything is in reverse. So I apologize about that. Hopefully going live on YouTube will turn it around and make it like facing forward. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, shout out to all of you. Shout out to all of you that was here listening to me read. Shout out to all of you that share my videos. Shout out to all of you that smash that subscribe button for me. Just a shout out to all of you here from Audrey's reading area. I will see you again tomorrow. I will be live at five. That's live. L I V E live at five tomorrow. You guys, I will see you there. See you soon.